Hey everybody, welcome back to my garage. Today I wanted to take a look at this iPad that I found at the thrift store today for only 20 bucks. Let's take a look at it. All right, so this is what we have. This is the $20 thrift store iPad. And as you can see, it's actually in pretty decent condition. It's got some scratches down toward the bottom as well as a few on the screen. It's got a couple dents on the bottom from where I assume it was dropped. But other than that, it's in pretty nice condition. As you can see, there's the sticker, $20 as is. And I'll get to why it says as is here in a second. This iPad is a cellular model. As you can see, it's got the black antenna right there on the top. So whoever owned this last decided to pay the extra money to get cellular built in. But overall, for an iPad found at the thrift store, it is not in that bad of a condition. So now you're probably wondering why the thrift store only sold it for 20 bucks as opposed to like 100 or $200. You know, iPads generally hold their value for a long time. Well, here's the reason why. You turn it on, iPad is disabled. Thankfully, this is an issue that can get fixed very easily. This happened because the previous owner entered their password incorrectly too many times. And usually it does give you a time limit, like try again in one minute or five minutes. But this person obviously did that so many times, it just permanently disabled the iPad. So we're going to have to hook this up to a computer and reset it and see if we can bring it back to life. So this iPad is a first generation iPad Air, which came out in 2013. So it is nine years old at this point, but these newer iPads actually still hold up really well. They're perfectly usable today. This iPad only supports up to iOS 12 and the latest at the time of this video is iOS 15. So it has been out of support for a few years, but I found that these newer model iPads with the more modern design language actually still hold up pretty well. They're not slow and they're generally still usable today. All right, so let's go over to the iMac here on the desk. We'll hook it up to iTunes, and we'll see what it takes to get this thing running again. All right, so I got the iPad here. Let's go ahead and hook it up to the iMac here, and we'll see what it gives me. Nothing? Huh. Nothing. Hopefully they don't have a bad connector of some kind. I'm gonna clean out the lightning connector on here. It looks a little dirty. We'll see if that helps. Okay, I clean out the inside of that connector with a wipe and sprayed it with some compressed air. So let's see what happens now. Still nothing. Okay, let me try hooking it up to a charger in the wall and let's see if that works. So I put this right here. Does not charge. Maybe the lightning connector on this doesn't work. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I powered the iPad off and I hooked up the cable and it turned itself on. So obviously the connector is good, but why isn't iTunes picking it up? There we go, that's what I wanted. Oh, perfect, awesome. All right, I switched over to screen recording on the Mac so you can see this better. So. I put the iPad into recovery mode and iTunes immediately picked it up, so that's awesome. So, uh, it does not tell me what iOS version this thing is running, because I kind of want to figure out what version of the iOS this thing is running. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to restore it. I'll restore it to the latest version. So, let's go ahead and start the restore and iTunes is currently downloading the software. So, looks like it'll take about five minutes. Go ahead and let it go through the restore and we'll see what we get after it finishes. All right, so the iPad just finished the restore. So I expect it to reboot here in a second. Yep, there it is. So, when it reboots, it should go back to the initial setup screen. It should not be disabled anymore. But there is one thing that I'm worrying about about this iPad, is if it's iCloud locked. If it's iCloud locked, then there's nothing I can do to get into it and actually use it. Okay, my hopes are a little higher because it's still connected to the computer and the computer says, welcome to your new iPad. And that 
kind of implies it does not have an active account. Okay, so here's what's going on on the computer. So I, I clicked continue on the welcome to new iPad and it came up to the actual iPad screen on iTunes. It would not do that if it was iCloud locked. So I think, I think we're in the good here. Look at that, we're on the initial setup. So let's go in. Don't transfer. It's not iCloud locked. That is such a relief. So many times you buy used Apple devices and then when you reset them, because they're still signed into iCloud and have Find My iPad turned on from the previous account, it will not let you in until the previous person's password has been entered and that would present itself right in the initial setup screen. It's wanting me to enter my own Apple ID to sign into the iPad, which means it's not iCloud locked and the previous owner actually either removed the iCloud account or it just wasn't set up at all. And I just noticed that the battery on this thing is at 3%. I haven't had this thing on the charger at all since I brought it home from the thrift store. So obviously the battery on this thing does function to some extent, but now since the iPad's actually operational, I should be able to use coconut battery on the Mac to take a look at its battery health. So I'm gonna take a look right now and we'll see if we can see it. Yes, we can. Oh, that's not bad at all. 91.7% health, so this battery still functions completely normally. The battery was manufactured January 20th, 2014. It has had 591 charge cycles. That's a lot. So a, a cycle is a full discharge and a full recharge of a battery. And so that's been done 591 times throughout this iPad's life. And now it actually just changed to 92.4. So yeah, this battery still has great health for its age. And the iPad itself was manufactured on March 10th, 2014, which would coincide with the time the iPad Air was being made. And this is a 32 gigabyte iPad model. This came in either 16, 32, 64, or 128. So this is the 32 gig. But yeah, 92% health for 591 cycles. This battery has aged really well. Okay, so we'll go back to the iPad and finish setting it up here. Let's get past all the tutorials. Welcome to iPad. There we go, look at that. We actually have a usable iPad that's not iCloud locked. That's amazing. Yeah, this thing seems to work good. Screens. Screen's working, the sound, the speakers are working because when I was typing on the keyboard, it was making the, the typing noise. So yeah, the sound on this thing does work. Let's test the camera. Outer camera is working. The inner camera is working. So good, the cameras are working. Let's test the microphone. Siri, you're living on an iPad that came from the thrift store. How do you feel about that? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? Unfortunately, not at this time, since you can't give me a good answer. I'm not sure I understand. I <laughs> didn't get what I said. Anyway, yeah, the microphone and the cameras are working. Let's test the volume buttons. Volume down. Volume up. I'll test the little switch on the side. That works. I think we just got ourselves a really good deal on an iPad Air here. <laughs> its only issue was it just needed to be reset in iTunes. So now, I guess at this point, I'll be stress testing it and testing out the battery, seeing if it actually holds a decent charge. I mean, it should, it has 92% health. I just got an iPad Air, a working iPad Air for 20 bucks. That's amazing. All right, some time has passed, and I can confidently say that this iPad works just as good as it did when it was new. The battery holds charge like it should, and everything I've thrown at it works just fine. But some of you might notice that aside from the wallpaper change, the interface on this iPad looks slightly different from what it did in the last clip of this video. Well, that's because this iPad is a little bit of a special model in that it is one of only a handful of Apple devices 
where you can actually downgrade the iOS version from iOS 12 down to iOS 10.3.3. So that is what I went ahead and did to this iPad. And there's a few reasons why you might want to do this. One, if you want to run 32-bit apps on a newer iDevice, you have to have iOS version 10.3.3 or lower. Once you get into iOS 11 and higher territory, it won't even let you run 32-bit apps, even if they're installed on the iPad. And you're out of luck if they're not installed because it won't let you install them. And two, downgrading your iOS device might make it feel a little more responsive. I noticed that with the iPad Air on iOS 12, it actually wasn't that slow. It felt pretty responsive. Because if you've ever used an iPhone 4S or an iPad 2, on iOS 9, which is the latest iOS version they support, you know it is a less than desirable experience, to say the least. But with these newer model iPads, iOS updates generally don't slow them down as much, if at all. So I think the days of those super slow devices after five or so years of updates are over. And I should say that the iPad Air on iOS 12 isn't the speediest thing ever, but it is perfectly usable. And downgrading to iOS 10 actually didn't give it that much of a speed boost, but I'm sure that since we're running a little bit of an earlier version of iOS, that it will be at least a little bit faster. So yeah, this iPad Air now runs iOS 10. And if you're wondering how to do this downgrade yourself, it's actually pretty easy. And it's probably going to be a video I make in the future. This downgrade only applies to Apple devices that run the A7 processor. So that would be the iPad Air and I believe the iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C. Those are the only ones that can use this downgrade. So there we have it. We took an iPad Air, restored it to factory settings so it wouldn't be disabled anymore and downgraded it to iOS 10 so that it could have a little bit more of a speed boost and greater legacy app compatibility. Thanks for watching this shorter video of mine. I do have some other videos in the works that are longer and those should be out very soon. But I should mention now that if you haven't seen my introduction to Max's Garage video, that I said that I'm a college student. And so in a couple days from after I'm recording this video, I will be back in the classroom. So. I won't have as much time to spend on filming and editing YouTube videos, so I probably won't be uploading as much uh, in the coming months because I will be back in the classroom soon. So just to let you guys know. But thank you for watching my video on the Thrift Store iPad Air. I will see you guys next time.